Hello, I'll be drawing this portrait today and let's start. I want to capture the silhouette first to see how it's gonna look on the page. So I'm trying to capture the hair. I feel like it's not too big, so like I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger on this side. And then I'll be drawing the face. Uh, this time I'm not gonna be doing a full construction of the head. I'll measure where her chin is gonna be ending, then the lines to the uh, corners of the jaw. I want to capture this line here to the cheekbones. These are the cheekbones. You can see her structure of the face really, really well on this photo. So it's really nice to study it. Okay, that would be the face, then the hair. It's gonna be this big, then the neck. The neck is usually symmetrical. <laughs> so like even if you don't see where that ends here, it's gonna be approximately uh, the same, whatever is on this side. So if you see it on one side, then you know where it ends on another side. Then I can see the middle part of the collarbones here. And then the shoulder is approximately here. So the collarbone goes probably there. And uh, it's symmetrical on both sides. In her case, sometimes person can put one shoulder lower than the other one. Then it's not going to be symmetrical. I would assume that the muscles the trapezius is gonna be here but it kind of doesn't look right maybe like it's there or maybe yeah maybe it's still here because it's gonna be like this yeah you see like when there's a lot of hair you don't really see it so you need to guess it uh, based on like different like little clues that you have but always uh, look at your sketch and see if it looks just natural and pretty there this jewelry is a big part of the composition in this case. Uh, I think the composition here is not the best because uh, I have a lot of space here that is empty. Like uh, in, in on the photo, that's the end of the photo, right? And I still have so much space. but. I don't want to redraw it, so let's start with the symmetry line. Okay, that's our symmetry line. Mm. Then we need to find the uh, line where our eyebrows are, the base of the nose, and the chin. And let's see if uh, they are equal to each other. Like the forehead is quite big, I think. Uh, and uh, this part is the smallest from all three. So maybe we divide it like this and like this. So this one's a, a little bit smaller. I'm pressing very lightly on my pencil because it's uh, a colored pencil. I just liked uh, drawing with colored pencils more than with the uh, graphite pencils. And that's why I cannot press too hard on it. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to erase it at all. It's not very erasable. You see, like, uh, if it's light, I can still erase it. But uh, if it's dark, I cannot. Just find the sides of the face. Uh, when in the front view, they're quite, uh, like, small. They're not as visible as in three-quarters view. And uh, they get a lot of shadows. You see, like, this is in the shadow. This part is in the shadow because it's side of the face. Uh, so I would approximately put them over here, maybe, like kind of like here. That would be the side. Then I also need to find where her uh, ears are located. And ho like luckily, I have like a little clue here. This is the end of the ear, so it's a little bit higher than the base of the nose. It means that she's like her head is slightly tilted down. Uh, because if she would be looking 100% straight at you, the ear and the nose would be on the same line. But in her case, it's just a tiny bit higher. 
and maybe that's why we see less of this uh, area from chin to the base of the nose and more of the forehead and probably a little bit more of the head there so the head probably ends somewhere there and it goes just like this that would be our head so since we know where one ear is uh, starting then it means that the other ear is also kind of there maybe it's behind the um, hair and we don't see too much or maybe her head is slightly turned this way so we see a little bit more of the left side and slightly less of the right side so we can draw the ear a tiny bit less wide as this one okay so i don't see where the ending but i would assume somewhere somewhere here maybe we just need to make sure that they are on the same height i can see the cheekbones sticking out there uh we can capture that and there is uh the jaws okay The cheekbones needs to be symmetrical, so make sure that they are symmetrical here. Let's do the eyebrows. So for the eyebrows, we have this way, a little bit here. I'm not gonna commit and uh, draw a perfect eyebrows uh, right away because uh, I might wanna change them a little bit higher or lower and I'm not sure right now what would be the best way. So I'm gonna... Uh, skip it for now and then come back to them and add more details when i have uh, more information on the canvas okay let's do the nose so we have like the plane between the eyebrows then we do in our box right like the simplified version of the nose so we have the front plane then we have the bottom plane and we have the side planes because I think she's uh, tilting the head a little bit down, uh, the bridge of the nose looks like it's almost let's let's make it a little bit higher aligned with the the corners of the eyes. Maybe it looks like this. So the eye line is gonna be here. I like to, uh, from the corner of the eye, add the line to the end of the eyebrow. Just kind of like finishes the eye area a little bit. But for the eyes, of course, we're going to have the eyeballs there. And then the eye is going to be lower than the eye line. For the mouth, I can divide this area in three. And... Uh, we can put the the mouth on this line. She, she has like a little bit open mouth and we can... I feel like the nose is a little bit too wide. Uh, let's see, like, so this is the width and we have like this corner there. This is the width and then there is a bit of corner. Yeah, I think it's it kind of makes sense. Then we can draw our lips. For the lips, I don't uh, connect these lines. So we kind of have like a soft edge at the corners of the lips. She has like a very big lower lip. And same thing goes here. Like I, I don't connect these lines to the corners. It's kind of a little bit loose. Then we have the shadows under the lips and it kind of looks very small because her lip is so big, I think it's covering all, all that uh, area there. So on other people, it might be a little bit more shadows visible or like maybe like because of the angle of the head, it also could be possible. That's why I noticed that uh, my chin is a little bit too angular to make her look more feminine and not too masculine. I would need to cut those angles but it's nice to have them in the beginning to make sure that you have 
structure right for it's symmetrical and I might smooth the corners of the jaws as well it might look like she, it's very angular uh, on her portrait but we don't want to exaggerate all those sharp corners we want to round them a little bit the hair grows from there it kind of goes there i think i think it's almost okay like right now like i'm trying to figure out if uh, all those uh, proportions are correct because i want to like start detailing a bit more i don't want to draw the eyes and then realize that they should be higher lower <laughs> or like something else the neck a little bit thick as well make it a little bit thinner and i want to maybe change uh, uh something from the reference is uh maybe i'll make her neck longer and change a little bit of the position of the shoulders I would push the collarbones a little bit lower. That's a good part of uh, <laughs> being an artist, that uh, if you don't like something, you can you can just change it. Maybe I should create even a bigger jewelry just to draw something at the bottom of the portrait as well. And here we will have our hair. Yeah, I think it's now... Uh, definitely better for my page have a look and see what would look good uh, on yours and make those changes don't be afraid to change something to make it look better that's the point when it's a photograph it's a little bit different it always looks realistic and good on photograph but when you draw in it, it, it you're not uh, always able to show it the right way so sometimes when you, when you cannot do it you should change it to to what you can do <laughs> and one day uh, even all those uh, difficult uh, angles or like for shortening or anything that looks that might look weird you, you would be even able to draw those things too without changing anything Okay, so I think the silhouette of this whole thing is kind of okay. Um, I think I'm happy with it. So I might start uh, detailing everything. I'm not trying to draw her 100% the way she looks. Even if uh, she would end up not looking like herself, it's okay because my goal is to do a study and I think you should also not worry about it too much as long as it looks like a realistic beautiful to you human being I think it's a good study because working on similarity is like a different uh, skill in a way uh, knowing like what makes this person look like themselves it's like a different type of studies that you can do later after you know how to draw a human face. Anyway, let's do, let's start with the features. Okay, maybe, uh, what should we do? The nose or the eyes? I think the nose would be better. So we can um, make our box don't look like a box anymore. <laughs> I'm cutting a little bit of those corners. Nostrils gonna be in the bottom plane of the nose so the nostrils for nostrils I'm, I'm pressing on my pencil harder to create those uh, thicker lines and for all other lines I'm not pressing too hard because nostrils are black you see they're, they're very dark there is a shadow there so everywhere where there is a shadow I'm gonna be pressing harder on my pencil and everywhere where it's uh, less shadows like no shadows no black 
color there, I'm not gonna be pressing as hard. So for example, the, uh, the thick line is gonna be where the nostrils are, the corners over here, because uh, it's uh, inside of the mouth, so it's kind of dark there, shadows, the corners, a little bit on that line here, like over here, uh, where else? It's gonna be a lot of black lines, not black, but in my case, pink or red, but very thick lines in the eyes. You see like how the top uh, eyelid there is very, very dark. But for example, this line here, not gonna be dark, because it's a very light value here and light gray tone on the other side. So I'm not using the darkest lines for that. What I want to uh, capture is the bottom plane of the nose. You see like how at the bottom plane of the nose, it's uh, more shadows. So I want to capture it. So it's, it would be easier for me to shade it. So like I would shade it just the whole plane and it would be already giving me more uh, form looking more 3d then uh, I'm gonna thin her nose a little bit maybe like on the top make it slightly rounder everywhere so this plane would be a little bit darker because on the side when you're looking on a person from the side from the profile this plane like so for example this is the head right this plane goes in towards the head and then this part goes out so when the light is from the top uh, we get a little bit more shadows on this plane and all the highlights and light on this top plane of the nose and that's why I want to show it I want to like just darken a tiny bit but not too much because this parts are even like not getting enough light even more so they're gonna be even darker but we still need to make the difference between this part and this part and the sides of the nose I'm also gonna darken them just a slightly a little bit more uh, I don't want to do it too much because they are not hidden from <laughs> from the sun or like the light too much they just uh, a tiny bit uh, darker they still uh, should be lighter than this area over here. Okay, let's uh, let's continue. Let's darken the eyebrows, even though they are not uh, in a shadow, but the hairs are darker, so they're gonna be darker. Um, let's also darken the uh, lips. So for the top lip, uh, you know, you see like how the, there is light there. Uh, sometimes I ignore it. I like to simplify the drawing a lot. And why I do it, why I ignore the, those highlights uh, is because when, again, you look uh, on the lips, so from the side, the, the upper lip goes in towards the head and the lower lip gets the light here on the top and the shadows a little bit on the bottom. So that's why I simplify it this way. But if you like to draw your portraits in more detailed, uh, realistic way, then you can focus on those highlights. I also darken a tiny bit of the teeth because they are in the shadows there. They don't get uh, direct light there. Even though you can see like this highlight much lighter than the teeth. So I put them in the shadow there. What's interesting about her eyes is that there is a symmetry here. You see like how uh, they're not symmetrical. This one gets a little bit more skin and goes over the eye. Uh, it's a hooded eye. And this one uh, should raise maybe a little bit the eyebrow up that it doesn't, it's, it looks different. Anyway, uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be capturing the asymmetry. I, I've seen her other photos and she uh, doesn't have it everywhere. Or maybe like it depends on the how old is she. And uh, with the age, uh, the eyes uh, get changed, like everything is moving. I know myself, I usually uh, draw the eyes uh, quite uh, low. So like there is a lot of space between the eyebrows. So maybe like this way, this time I'm not gonna start with corner corner than the eye. 
to make sure that I, I want to like capture the likeness so I'll start with a different way okay uh, I'll start <laughs> with the measuring the distance first between the eyebrows and the eye like the eyelid and then I'll see where my eye will be because I know like I, I make this uh, it's not a mistake but it's something I do all the time <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, get those lines first and then I'll see where the I will be maybe the eye line is gonna be changed a little bit okay and then the eye line oh you know I think it was quite okay quite right before yeah I think the eye line was fine there so her eyes are not as big as they seem because she has the makeup and the makeup makes her eyes uh, much bigger. So I'm drawing the eye corners. Make sure that they are on the same line. Then we can draw the, the lower eyelid. Again, for the lower eyelid, I'm not pressing too hard with my pencil because there is no black line you see like how there is a black line there that's uh, I'm pressing hard with my pencil there is no black line there it's uh, I'm pressing very light the line weight is super important when you sketching anything because you can show what is in the shadow what is in the light just by making lines uh, thicker or thinner Let's draw the irises and pupils. So what happens here? We have the waterline. You see the waterline is that the, it shows the thickness of the eyelid. So I, I don't want to like actually draw it, but what I would do in sketch, I would uh, leave some space between the eyelid and the um, iris, and that little space would represent the waterline because okay this is the eye right from the side eyeball this is the eyelid the upper eyelid this is the lower eyelid and uh, this is the eyeball and this little line here is the waterline and again the sun goes from here so the sun might um, get on this eyelid sometimes depends how deep it is, is the eye socket and it's very often gets on the this waterline. And over here, the lower eyelid is in shadow. So this waterline is in light and the uh, lower eyelid is in the shadow. And then the cheek is in the light again. Uh, that's why I'm leaving the space between the eyelid and the iris. And that space is uh, light. And that's how I'm showing that it's getting the light there. So I'm drawing her irises. I'm drawing one eye first. And then without looking on reference, I'm kind of like trying to guess where the second is going to be. And I'm looking only at her. So like I want to like find that uh, position where she's looking at me back. Sometimes you need to maybe close the eye a little bit. Uh, move left to right but the, the circles these circles should be the same like this should be same size and they should be very round so if I continue drawing them they should be perfect circles they should not be squashed looking like ovals okay let me erase that part but I was just showing that it would look like a circle okay so I think that's okay for now if you have uh, troubles identifying if it's uh, okay and looking right again take a picture of your sketch and then 
swap it like from left to right. Even with her, you can notice right away there is a lot of asymmetries and she's still looking beautiful. So asymmetries is not always bad, but for drawings, you need to be very careful because people might think that it's a mistake. So it's uh, probably better to try uh, aim for the symmetry in the drawing because you would never be 100% symmetrical anyway. <laughs> so let's start adding some shadows. We can add the shadows uh, at the lower eyelid and as you can see I'm adding a little bit darker at the corners there and then slightly going light lighter to the middle part here. We have, uh, we have beautiful highlights here. I don't know if you want to make the same but I'll, I'll make just one of them because she has like two, two of them. We can shade the eye area from those lines that we had previously. We definitely need to shade uh, this plane here that gets a lot of uh, shadows. And I think her top eyelids also get quite a lot of shadows there. Maybe like this part only gets some light, but it's also mm, tricky because I think uh, it could be also the makeup that is uh, getting this highlight. So that's why I don't really like to draw uh, women with makeup too much, but her makeup looks natural, which is uh, fine. I think like her makeup just um, exaggerating her fe natural features but some will make the makeup where they change the features when they for example they have a cheekbone here but they would draw a highlight somewhere like higher or lower to show that uh, there is a cheekbone there <laughs> and then it becomes tricky because you don't know which version of the person to draw the one that they are or the one that they do on themselves <laughs> i'm gonna erase uh, all these lines because I don't want all these lines to be on her face and I reshade uh, the planes. I'm gonna darken this bit here. And let's maybe draw the pupils. So the pupil is going to be also a perfect circle right in the middle of your of your eyes. And uh, if you draw them quite big, it would be looking like the person uh, is high <laughs> or uh, in love. So like I still like to draw them quite uh, big usually because I, I want to uh, people that look at my portraits feel like my drawing is in love with them. Um, darkening her irises, but they shouldn't be as dark as the pupils because the pupils are the darkest uh, bits. And then I'm gonna darken the upper part of the irises too because we're gonna have a lot of shadows from all those eyelashes. Then we also want to darken her eyeballs because the eyeball is a, a sphere. We have the light and then we gradually go to the darker sides to show that it's a, a sphere. So what it means, we're gonna uh, shade it uh, from the sides, from the corners, and also we're gonna have, uh, because we have the eyelid, it's gonna be cast shadow from the eyelid as well. So it's, the, sh the shading is gonna be from the eyelid as well. What's interesting here, like there is a waterline and waterline gets a little bit more light. So we can still get that line for the waterline. And then from there, we're gonna darken the eyeball. Same here. We leave a little bit of the waterline and then we darken the eyeball and we darken a little bit under the eyelid. Okay, a little bit more shadows here. 
more shadows there, especially with the hooded eye. I need to add a little bit more shadows there and the cast shadows as well. And a little bit here to show that it's a round shape there. What we didn't do, we didn't draw the, uh, the make of the cat eyes. So it's like this darker eyeliner line. And also we have like a tiny bit of eyelashes visible. Let's uh, shade the face. We have uh, like the front of the face is getting the light, which is the forehead, uh, the forehead in the middle here, and it's touching the eyebrows. But the rest of it, it's kind of have like, again, it looks like a sphere. So we're gonna also like shade it a little bit like a sphere here. leaving the highlight for the middle part. And then we also have the sides of the face, which are, in her case, over here. So like, and it's getting much darker than the forehead. So this one a little bit uh, lighter value, and this one's darker value. Okay, let's shade the forehead so with a lighter value and kind of like shaping the roundness for the forehead. But we want to like leave this spaces for for the highlights. I'm adding a little bit of uh, darker values to the hair, so I'm doing it so I, I feel the difference between values and uh, I would place the right values on the face, otherwise I would need to go back and maybe darken them and light, lighten them if uh, they're not relative to the other values around them. But I think like that would be quite dark. And then this seems okay. It's very dark on the side of the face. So I can also add those dark values to see how, how far I can go. <laughs> like now I can see that uh, the eyes probably should be much darker. But it's nice not to go too dark right away because uh, having a lot of uh, different values is what makes it look 3d so it's good to build up sometimes slower because when you do it too fast you might uh, go too dark and then you would lose the the form and it would be a little bit flat like a like a cartoon. Okay, uh, let's darken just a little bit behind the ear. And the ear itself also is gonna be in the shadows. So it's gonna be quite dark. We don't want too much attention. And there we have like a lot of darkness. We don't even see the ear much. The cheekbones, the cheekbones get light. But on the side, you see like how there is a, a lot of shadows there. So we want to capture those shadows on the side. Make sure that your light is not touching the ear because there is a like a space between that light and the ears.
over here this connects to the corner of the chin our chin is also not flat so we're adding shadows radial shadows from the bottom to show the roundness of the chin and we connecting these shadows that we already started with these ones because only like this part should be getting the highlights the light is going to be from cheekbones to the this part of the lips so here it's going to be not as dark as was here but it's just like a, a gradual shift between values so we have the roundness of the face so she's not too angular let's do a little bit on the nose so for the nose what i like to show i like to show like this line over here that's going around the this area around the corner of the eye so like usually around the corner of the eye gets a little bit of highlights and I like to keep it light and then there is this sharper line going down there I feel like her nose is quite white in my drawing I'm gonna add these darker shadows just to shape it to make sure it's shaped correctly it happens because I'm introducing dark and darker values so I need to go back and uh, add more darker values everywhere like here, I feel like it's a little bit flat because it's too much of a, a white page left. So I'm adding a tiny bit of shadow somewhere. I'm gonna add her bottom eyelashes. If you don't want to add the uh, bottom eyelashes, you can add the just like a thicker line. Just make the line look darker and thicker right under the borderline. Definitely need to reintroduce darker values to the to the lips here. So like the corners here, the corner of the lips there, the corners needs to have a little bit of uh, shadows around, around them as well because those corners are holes <laughs> and uh, we cannot have like a surface and then there is a hole usually what happens the surface and the hole is like this so that would be dark there the black color but here you see like how it gets uh, this little bent lines so that's would be represented with a little bit of shadows around there i want to have like the lightest line from here to here uh, for that i need to just a tiny bit darken around it i think the eyes are not symmetrical so this one's gonna go down and this one is not what i'm gonna do I'm, i'll try to move them a little bit so right now when i'm fixing the eyes i'm trying not to look at the reference at all because it might confuse me i just want to make sure that she would look good just on the drawing and maybe uh, i have this problem with the eyes because i was trying to capture her asymmetry I'm just trying to play around with the eyes by adding darker values maybe like here I feel like I have like this dark value there it doesn't make sense too much and again this is a good uh, time to take a picture of your drawing and uh, swap the image 
horizontally to see what could be changed. In the beginning, it's difficult to notice uh, what's wrong and how to fix it. But it comes training your eye on doing it, right? So, but what you can do instead is use those little tools that help in the photo or, or taking a picture and uh, looking at your drawing zoomed out like a thumbnail, you know, like in a gallery. Same way if you would post it uh, on social media, you would see it just like a tiny square. Yeah, when it's so small, you can also notice a lot of uh, mistakes in it. So just take a picture and look it in your gallery of the phone without opening the image and you might see what to fix. Or you can turn your image upside down or you can uh, take your sketchbook and go to the mirror and look in the mirror with your image and you might notice uh, if something is wrong with it too. Or you can also forget about the drawing for a few hours or a day, come back and then you would also might notice those uh, changes that needs to be done. Or you can ask uh, a help of uh, other person, even if that person is not uh, an artist, they can still help you because we humans, we are very familiar with the human faces and all of us are professionals at it because we look at them daily. For the lips, what I want to like, the, this highlight, we still have this highlight and I would move it just uh, above the lip. Basically to draw the highlight, you shouldn't draw anything. And what I'm doing, I'm just drawing uh, a little bit darker plane next to it. And now it, this looks like a highlight. And I can also draw a tiny bit of this plane, but be careful, don't draw her mustache <laughs> because I don't think it would look good. So this needs to be very, very lightly, almost invisible. And then we can add a little bit of uh, form to the lips because they're going to be slightly darker at the bottom. And the same goes here. It's going to be shadows under the lip, but the lip also would have a little bit of uh, shadows at the bottom of the lip and also a little bit on top. So what we get uh, at the end is a highlight in the middle of the lip. And again, you can um, go and draw all those wrinkles and everything if needed. I just uh, don't draw very detailed portraits. I draw very simplified versions of them. We definitely need to make the neck darker under the chin. Make sure you're not missing some bits because uh, if you miss some areas and you leave it white, like, like I had before, it would look like, um, not like a shadow, but just like a beard patchy because it shouldn't be any light there. Because all your Pencil marks now become not just pencil marks, but you're showing where is the light and where is the shadows. So where you left pencil mark is a shadow and uh, where you left the paper, that's the light. And you don't want light to be in the places where it should be only shadows.
I need to darken the, the values here. Let's get her birthmark. Uh, let's maybe like darken this under cheekbones. But we don't want to overdo things. Sometimes uh, less is more. So for the hair, what I want to do, I will, I'm adding uh, the base color of the hair. And then after I have the base color for all hair, I can uh, just darken the shadows and leave the these parts lighter where there's a highlight. It's shading hair is a lot of work, unless you know some shortcuts of doing it if you do know shortcuts let me know i had to take one day break between uh my beginning and now and now i'm full of uh energy can continue even the hair <laughs> yeah probably not gonna be finishing the jewelry just uh the main idea of it like for example, a little bit of the shadows there next to the hair and the hair should be much darker. I also think that I made, uh, not a mistake, but it's the, 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 uh, the pencil, the color of the pencil is not the best because it doesn't really go too dark. For example, if I can take the blue pencil it's much darker and now I can create uh, darker values which would help me to make it a little bit more 3D as well. So let's just really fast finish the, the hair. At least like so they don't look white. If you would like a feedback from me on this portrait, you can uh, join my Patreon and uh, submit uh, the drawing for review for overpaint. I do monthly overpaints there and uh, I will make a, a video where I'll edit your picture on my iPad so you can see the changes I'm making right away and explaining why I'm making them. Uh, it could be helpful, especially if you're a beginner. It's nice to get some feedback. It definitely helps to learn much faster. I, I do this because when I was starting uh, drawing portraits, uh, this is exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for someone to give me feedback. <laughs> so now when I, I have my own Patreon, this is my favorite uh, activity there to give feedback. You're very welcome to join and say hi there. We also doing um, monthly studies there. You can see the different versions of uh, monthly studies every month uh, in on my Instagram. 
But I'm thinking of uh, starting posting it on YouTube too. Maybe with overpaints or or just like sharing it on the side. Maybe just adding at the end of the video to show the the studies of other people, of other artists. But it's gonna be at the end of the month. So not in this video. <laughs> I think uh, that's okay for hair. I was trying to capture some of the individual uh, hair strands here and there, and sometimes like focusing on the shadows. Like you see, like for example, the, this triangle over here of the shadows, and we can just draw it somewhere here. In a way, like I'm not drawing it uh, very realistically. It's just an impression of the hair. And you can keep going because Hair is so interesting and complex that you can just keep going, keep going, keep going. And uh, the good part about hair as well, you can design them, change them, make them more interesting, prettier than uh, on a photograph. But her hair here are just uh, very beautiful, definitely very beautiful. To What to pay attention when you're doing the hair is... Uh, where is the light? So in her case, you can see like there is a light, this, this line of light. So there are hair strands that share highlights on the same line. And you want to identify those lines of highlights and uh, show them. So everywhere else should be a little bit darker. And there it should be like a visible lighter area. Here and even going over here, that's the line of highlights. In here it's a little bit... Uh, darker just because that hair strand is a little bit more inside but we can still have this light in aligned there is a little bit of light here uh, and I have only two hair strands and we can darken everything except where we want our highlights to be And a little bit over here. Uh, I, I think like mine is already darker than this area there. But at least like few places, like this one's probably was the most important one to show the the form of the of the head, because the head is also round, and uh, the hair is are showing it. So the hair is also kind of like a sphere made out of uh, different strands of hair. I think it's good enough. Uh, maybe I want to just do a little bit over there between the carbon area. What do you think? I think sh she's okay. Uh, everywhere where you feel like it's a little bit flat, like if you look look at it uh, from far away maybe, and you see it's a tiny bit flat, that's where you need to go and add a little bit more of a shadows and flat is usually where it's uh, just uh, one value white like here is quite flat but uh forehead needs to be a tiny bit flat but you don't want it to be too big so you still want to maybe like add uh, a very very light pencil strokes there just so it's not pure white because pure white are the highlights, and highlights we on 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 her have only like in few places, like in the eyes, maybe like around uh, the corners of the eyes, could be on tip of the nose, even though I don't see it. But I assume it should be somewhere there, like the highlights. Definitely on her lips there, a little bit on the lip here, on the chin, chin her chin gets a lot of highlight. So those areas, ideally, should be the only areas that are the color of the page but I'm making it a little bit more contrasty like less realistic kind of stylized that's why um, I have more of a paper color on her face so I'm, 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 I'm making it a little bit more contrasty Practically, I can just keep 
going and going and adding more and more smaller changes that are not going to be too dramatic at this point but the longer i work on it the more 3d she will be coming but i don't want to make this video too long you would need to do it yourself if you want to work more on it but if you don't i think at this point it's already a good study what do you think i, I think she even looks a little bit left like her i'm not happy with the paper because uh, i heard the paper quite a lot here that uh, I, I can't even go darker anymore because the paper is about to tear like you see like over here uh, maybe i need to find a different sketchbook for drawing with the colored pencils i hope it was helpful and uh, see you next time bye